Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. We have Dawn Dixon here. What's up? Good morning, Dawn. Good morning. Tell the people who you are for those who may not know. Dawn Dixon. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm an inventor. Um, okay. Making shit happen. Making things happen. There you go. It's better to say shit. Yes. I, that's how I'm <laughs> feeling right now. You now, know? when I first met Dawn, I was in Atlanta. And I was at the I was at a restaurant at the mall. I think I was at was I at Phipps? And you really? came by with some flat out heels for Definitely me. Definitely was pushing my flats. Right. So now I always thought this was one of the best ideas ever. Imagine as a woman, you're at the club or you're walking around and your feet start hurting. I'm the type of person I'm not walking barefoot. I'm not taking my shoes off and walking around with nothing on my feet. So she had invented these flat out heels. They roll up in a little tiny bag and you can just slide those on your feet and I was thinking what a great idea so talk about how you got to that point where you started Flat Out Hills and then where you moved from there yeah so thank you for showing love all the time and for everybody that showed love but it just really came from again feet hurting in the club I was living in Miami mm -hmm. you know working in a promotions business at the time and my aha moment was in the club feet hurt wanted to take my shoes off couldn't do that and my idea was why can't women just buy some flats in a vending machine. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're in the club, we're at the, a concert, we're at a conference. So that's really what sparked me to to get it in business was to create something like on demand. So I launched Flat Out, sold it online first, got my vending machines out. Um, it was a long, crazy, ridiculous, hard, long journey, but I'll skip to the to the good part. We put it in Atlanta Airport was my first place, had the machine. Club Live, had it in the women's restroom mm -hmm. for several wow. years. Um, MGM Grand uh, Casino. Uh, now, how do you get to that point? Now, don't skip the process. I like when the process hear about is the process. so hard. So, um, how did I get it in there? Really, I got in there because of my network. Okay. So, for years, I worked in um, marketing and promotions for athletes and entertainers in Atlanta, and um, you know, my network just came through when I was like, "I have this good idea. Can you help me get some placement?" So that's how I got it in Live. But the machine itself, I had to invent because I couldn't find any hardware manufacturing company to build a machine for me. So I essentially had to go out and build my own hardware. Your own vending machine. Had to build my own vending machine, which, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I never expected to be building a vending machine. I, I just wanted to about sell <laughs> I just wanted to sell a product in a vending machine. That's yeah. all I really wanted none to of do. The other vending machines, it, it wouldn't work in none of the other vending machines that Nah, because I didn't want to sell my shoes in the same machine as a Doritos. Gotcha. Like it just didn't look good. And yeah, plus yeah, Club yeah. Live, that's a high end spot, you know they wanted a certain look or mm -hmm. they wouldn't let me do it. So I had to actually invent it, went through a lot of, you know, lost a lot of money, built some in Spain, 15,000, they didn't work. Built some in the UK, they worked, but they couldn't send receipts, they couldn't get online. I mean, it was just so many problems because the overall vending industry is not sexy at all, of mm -hmm. course. Nobody's mm -hmm. doing that. It's I'm getting never, sexy now. It's getting sexy it's now. Getting but sexy. at the time, 2012, I was literally the only black woman I ever saw anywhere and mm -hmm. the youngest person I ever saw anywhere doing this. Did you raise money or did you use your own money? So for Flat Out, because I have two companies, for Flat Out, um, this was 2011 I started it, I raised like 250000 for my friends. You know, which was a blessing. You got some nice friends. People talk about black people don't yeah. invest. All of my investors were black. My mm -hmm. angel investors were high net worth individuals, friends, athletes, you know. In but a, you in NBA, Atlanta, though. In Atlanta. A lot of black money in Atlanta. And it came from Ohio State. Shout out to the Ohio State University. Okay. That's my school. So mm -hmm. I got a lot of my friends, you know, came in. Smallest check was 10000 Largest one was ninety. And I did learn, I was just on a panel and we were talking about using your alumni network from your college to actually raise money. A lot of us don't do that, but part of what you pay for college for is to be able to access that network That's that you have. That's all it is, really, because anything else you can learn online. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is college for these days but the network? So right. I, I definitely did max out my network and my friends and so raise money for that. And really, um, at the time... VC, like venture capital, well, nobody was talking about that. Black people, it wasn't a thing for black people at all to get any type of venture capital. So it was all like bootstrap, you know, friends and family. But we made money from just selling product. Mm -hmm. That The good part about that business was product sold online, product sold wholesale. But when I got into the vending, which is essentially manufacturing something, mm -hmm. um, I had to raise money. Mm -hmm. So that's when I had to figure out, all right, I'm at the time I'm in Atlanta, how am I going to get money for to build hardware, build vending machines when nobody's talking about vending? 
um, Silicon Valley, they're not talking about hardware and vending. Everybody's about apps. This is when the apps mm-hmm. was just, everybody got an app for something. So me talking about the hardware is not was not popping. But, you know, it ended up working out because I pivoted the company to software. Mm-hmm. So what I decided was, we got this hardware, it don't really do nothing. I mean, you can buy something out of it, but no data is collected, no information. Um, I didn't know who my customers were. I had no idea about conversion rates. Like there was just such a lack of information that I could collect and I couldn't really scale that business. So I that's grow different that for business. vending machines. Now you can, what, what you created is a way to collect all that information, which is useful information that can be utilized for other things. Yeah, so I decided to develop, develop software instead of just building the hardware. And that's when I was able to raise, now at this point I've raised $1.2 million for for that business to build software and went through Techstars and you know other programs, but it was really to innovate and create software to make the hardware work. It's like having an iPhone and just an iPhone without yeah, the operating yeah, yeah. system. It right. just it doesn't do anything. So, you know, I had to invent the software and the hardware. We hear all the time about how hard it is, right, for black women to raise money yeah. from venture capitalists. And I know you don't even like those discussions. So talk about that and that process and being in that space where they always give you these numbers like, oh, black women only raise $36,000 for every... Yeah, you know your facts, though. It, yes, yes. That, that's the average amount of black women raises is 36000 mm-hmm. And like I said, you know, I've raised now for this business 1.1. Overall, I've raised 1.5 for both the businesses. And at first, I was driven by like, if you tell me I can't do something... Because I'm black or because I'm a woman, I'm going to do it just Mm -hmm. to prove you wrong. So at first I was so driven by I want to be one of the first 20 black women to raise a million dollars, which a million dollars ain't shit for real. Right. Like, you see people cool. raising. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Okay. Well, no, when it comes to venture capitalists. Capital, oh, yeah, the venture capitalists. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. We explain that. Yes. We got to listen to that. Yes. Like, what, yes. what do you mean a million dollars? No, yeah. we see how much money <laughs> white men raise yeah, like, easily. In comparison to my peers, you know, it, when you're looking at like, of course, white men, the average check that they get from just starting up is like 1.5 out the gate. Don't matter. Mm-hmm. What's up? If it's good or not. But for <laughs> us, it's $36,000 mm-hmm. over the course of the whole life of your business. And so, again, first, I just wanted the money, of course, to build my business. But I wanted to do it because I said we couldn't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, several of other now it's about 40 black women that have raised over a million dollars, um, sev- you know, in the tens of millions of dollars. But then it became something different when I learned the game. Um I really compare this life to like, I call it the civil rights movement of access to capital Um, because we are really far behind there. But then at the same time, I'm like, why do we, why do we even want their money so bad? Because I feel like, you know, integration hurt us. Ooh, talk talk about it. So I feel like, why do we want their money so bad when the, the cost is so high, you know, they're taking all of our equity. Right. So you see all these, these That's founders. That's another struggle. They're taking all your equity. And when you get that investment, now what do I have to give up from my Everything. company in order to get that investment? Because Everything. Because that's always been a struggle for me. Like I have the drink fresh juice that yeah. I'm doing. And... I don't really want to give up equity in my company to get an investment. So I've been funding everything myself just because I don't want to give up that equity. Exactly. So it's really a game. So I got into it. I'm like, okay, I want to be in it so bad. I want to be, you know, I want them to accept me. I want them to give me a check. But then I get to the table and I'm like, wait a minute. You want 40% of my this company? This ain't even built for me to win. Like, right. I'm losing out the gate. It, it's Especially such when you a think temporary about all this, win. Especially yeah. when you think about all the sweat equity you've already put in. You just yes. gonna give somebody forty percent? Nah. That's what it looks like. So you stop that... focusing on raising money now. Yeah. So I stopped focusing on. So I raised the money. I said, you know, I'm just gonna build my product. I want to focus on revenue because when you even hear these announcements about startup companies these days, they all talk about how much they raise. They raise this many millions. Mm-hmm. Where's the revenue? Where's the sales? And even for like black women, they talk about oh, how much we can raise. There's black women out here making millions of dollars that didn't raise a penny. That's right. They're just I'd rather doing do it numbers. like that. Yeah. So I said, you know, I'm going to focus on my revenue and I want to be able to create wealth in my community. That's what I'm passionate about. And I know that the real way to create wealth is through investments. And one thing that we don't know as a people in general, because I didn't know, is that we're kept out of deals. Like you don't see nobody black on Uber, Twitter, all these companies that are IPOing because you have to be an accredited investor to invest in early stage deals Mm -hmm. to get to the table to write a check. So accredited means you have a million dollars net worth, you make over 200,000 a year as an individual, 300,000 as a couple. 
So that means my family members couldn't invest in my dream. You know, I'm, I'm coming out here, I have a company worth $8 million and I'm raising more money and I can't get money for my friends. Mm -hmm. I can't get money for my family. And I have friends that have raised money and exited and they were like, you know, the hardest thing for them was right at the end of the day when they get that biggest, the big bag, giving most of that money to people that don't look like them, mm -hmm. the people that didn't do nothing for them. And so now, you know, I'm growing my company in a new way which is raising money from my people, which is a new law that Obama passed 2012, which we don't know about. But people always say Obama didn't do nothing for black people. I'm not into politics, but I do know that now there's a way for black people to get in on early stage deals mm -hmm. and to start creating real wealth by investing in companies. And that's what we need to do. We need to pull our resources so we ain't yes. always dependent on the white man. Exactly. I love exactly. what you said about, uh, you know, integration hurting us. Expound on that a little more. I feel, I, feel like, um, I feel like we had thriving communities, yes. um, thriving neighborhoods, thriving businesses. Yes. I live in a, a neighborhood now in Columbus, Ohio, that's gentrified, but it was a thriving black community with black doctors, dentists, pharmacies, everything Banks. you can imagine, anything, yep. you, mm -hmm. insurance companies. And we were really thriving in those communities. And then it comes from us feeling like we always got to be at their table to be validated. validated. And so... We okay, no, we don't want to drink out of our fountains. We don't want to go to our restaurants because we want to be with them, which I get it. I do, I do. But there's good restaurants in the neighborhood. And same yep. thing with capital. We have high net worth individuals in our mm -hmm. community. We have dollars in our community. So I feel when integration happened, we stopped buying with our communities. Then the highways came through, split our neighborhoods up. And now all these neighborhoods that were black thriving neighborhoods are gentrified or they're just they're just falling apart. They're not there. And it's the same thing with capital. We are still reaching to go outside to get, you know, beg and prove our worth and sell our coal company just to get the, right. the white dollars. And I said, you know, I did it. I did. And I'm grateful. And I have some good investors. I raised over a million. But I said, now I want to give people in my community a chance to invest in a tech company and get money. And when I exit, I want to I want to make some black millionaires. I, I want I want those checks to go to my people. I love that because sometimes people will say to you, man, all you got is a black audience. So what? So And that's all I need. We all we need. That's what I day. believe. That's what I believe. And I'm not like exclusionary, but I'm about like we got all we need within ourselves. Yes. We have the power, the influence, the dollars, the, the innovation. We're inventors, even though we don't get the credit for many patents that are out there that we authored and that we created. So me as an inventor... You know, it's important for for me to be able to leverage that. And, and you know, the Jobs Act is called Job, Jumpstart Our Business Startups. From 2012, Obama went really hard with the SEC to change the laws around who can actually invest. Mm -hmm. Because we know by the time a company IPOs, everybody who got in early, they're already rich. Yeah, the day that shit hits the stock market, they're rich. And then we trying to be like, oh, I want to buy these stocks. I want to get on the apps or whatever. You late. You late. I'm not. I do have some IPOs that I'm very glad that I started learning about it because I didn't know anything about that previously, but I did manage to get in on some. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it, it takes money, you know. But how how was the company doing now? How was how was the company doing now? Because you talk about the vending machines yeah. and you said it was and live. How many vending machines did you have to actually make? So we we built five vending machines as a beta, which is a test mm -hmm. to see if people would use them to get some market validation. Because again. You can't just, I couldn't just go out there, me, not me as a black woman, go out there like, I got an idea, give me the money. I had to show yes. some traction, right. is what they call it. So I did that, put it out there, tested it, proved that people want to do it, got 30 customers to sign up. Then I went back with the customers, the early data, and then raised the money. So the products actually, my, my vending machine called the Pop Shop is what I invented, and it's actually coming out in May. So we placed five, got the data, got the traction. Now we're placing the new ones in May. And we've also moved towards working in the cannabis and regulated retail. That's going to really help. And they can do face recognition. Yeah. So we so what we have on our vending machines that make them unique and different is that we use face recognition, artificial intelligence, and we also use blockchain technology. So the face recognition is to count the people that walk by and tell how many people walk by versus how many purchased. That's a conversion rate. That mm -hmm. helps you know That's your dope. business traffic. That's dope. Then... It tells you if it's male or female, up to 92% accuracy, their approximate age. So you have a real you snapshot of your customer. Yes, dope. I have a patent pending. Pop, popcom, yeah, popcom.shop. I have a patent pending on that. Um, I have a patent pending on the hardware as well, which integrates two cameras and two screens onto the hardware. So it's really cool, very mm -hmm. different looking. 
It also um, delivers targeted advertising and messaging. So you walk by, you're a male around this age. If it's a message for you, you'll get oh it. You walk God. by, you're a female. If it's a message for so you, you'll get it. So it'll be like Viagra it. for them. Ooh. Do you know what's going to happen? <laughs> I'm going to say congratulations already because the U.S. government is going to have to give you a lot of money because they, they, they're going to want to yeah. use that product because they can find criminals now because now... Oh my that's God. what they're doing in China. It's, just, now, it's a sketchy it. thing. You walk by that vending machine and you're a wanted person and it, it has facial recognition? Oh, my God. We're not using though. that. They do not have that. Machine. They don't have not it on a vending, vending machine. machine so if you think about exactly the technology exists and a lot of fights about it, you know, ethically around um, privacy. Right. Um, and it's, it's outlawed in the U.K. a lot. You know, China's maxing it out to the full max like you don't have any privacy but here what we're doing to protect the privacy is we take the picture so you say you walk by mm -hmm. and we capture your picture but we turn your face into a biometric hash what that is is like a series of numbers and letters that represent you mm -hmm. so it doesn't know that it's you it just right. knows you're a female around this age we store that hash on the blockchain which the blockchain is a ledger it's essentially a database and the only way to unlock your data is for you to say um, through your app, let them have my information. The okay. reason why you would do this is if you want to buy something regulated, like cannabis, mm -hmm. we have a several dispensaries that are You'll customers of ours. That. You have to verify your age and your identity for consumption. That's, you know, it's a legal amount of cannabis you can consume. Right. Alcohol, if you want to buy, self-checkout at the grocery store. If you go to the grocery thing store right your now, ID. you have to show your ID. Mm -hmm. So this will, for your face. Right. So same thing, or loyalty programs. But now we put the data control in the cus in the hands of the customer. So no more can retailers take your personal information, your shopping information, only anonymized data. So we're not focusing on the government. We don't want to do that. But there are currently over 9 million vending machines just around in the U.S. that are just real estate, that are not doing nothing mm -hmm. but just there. Right. So we're going to enable them to deliver ads, collect data, but still protect the customer. But, you know, I'm not about exploiting individuals' information. Eventually, all this stuff, all this Facebook and all these data breaches, this will be a thing of the past, and the new wave will be allowing customers to really protect their data more, and that's you, what I'm doing. You said the patent is pending. Pending. So should you be talking about that? Yeah, Publicly? I can talk about it. It's okay. public it's already it's filed. information. Yeah. It's right. filed, so you do a provisional mm -hmm. patent first. Mm -hmm. You build it. You have a year to build it. Mm -hmm. Then you do your full patent, which means now it's out to the world. And mm -hmm. then if anybody wants to contest it or say, I got this too, they review it. and right. then It's they already issue. out there. So it's out there. So we I have to wait this, to see. I love this PopCom idea because it stemmed from your first idea. Like you, yeah. you did the vending machines. You saw what it was lacking. You was like, you know what? Why not? Let me create what's lacking. Solve my own problems. Yeah. Solve my yeah, own yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah. And that's what, it, that's what it's really about. I've been an entrepreneur 18 years now. And just, you know, that's the thing. It's solving a problem that you see, bringing a product to market. And it's really all, it's kind of the same process. Like, if you can run a business, you can run a business. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, you can run a business. And so, you know, having that, that foundation prepare me, because it's just so hard. I mean, I've well, been through so We've been many... talking so long about you coming up here, and you've always been sending updates on everything that's yeah. been happening. But what I think is great is it's great information for people who might be thinking about starting their own businesses. Just the whole how you had to beta test the machines, and then you have to prove that you have customers yeah. in order to get those people to invest because they want to see, well, how are we going to make money? Is there any customers out there? And you've yeah. proven that you have something that works. We do. We have Procter & Gamble as a customer. Um, we have some big, some big customers. But more than anything, like... I'm, I love my business, of course, and, and it's doing well. And, you know, I definitely plan to sell it in three to five years. Um, but for me, the most important thing is, like, the wealth creation in the community. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is showing founders that you don't have to get crumbs. You don't have to go beg. You can right. get money from your people. There's a new law that yeah, allows right. you to raise money from your people. Um, and, and for investors, you can now go invest in a tech company. Mine, but others. Right. And you can have a chance to get on on some early deals because, of course, the risk is high. Any investment is a high risk. Any investment. High you know, risk, you know, high reward, though, though. You know, a lot of people talk about, you know, building up a company and, and then selling it. And a lot of times that's what entrepreneurs do. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's like you look at a lot of things like BET. You know, yeah. it was black owned and he sold it off. And yeah. now it's not necessarily. And, and yeah. a lot of other things. Would that matter to you if you sold it to an African-American, a Caucasian, an Asian? Would you want to keep it all black because this is a company that you built from the ground up? Or do you just like, you know what, this is my cash out. Whoever yeah. got the most bread. I, I used to think about that. It was something that weighed on me because I remember when Lisa Price sold Carol's daughter, it was like a thing. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it was a black-owned business and now it's right. not. You know, Which and is the true. Same, and the same thing with, same the, thing with know, the communities. You know? with, the, with the communities. But for me, this specific technology that I'm building, it needs to be 
in the in the hands of a bigger company to really scale it unless I want to stick around and IPO with it. And I don't. And it's about being self-aware as an entrepreneur. So I do care about black. I mean, I'm like black AF. But at the same time, I feel like holding on to a company and making a hundred year old company and keeping it in my family is maybe not as valuable as exiting it. Taking that money and it- in on mm-hmm. my cap table, mm-hmm. flipping their money. And creating black wealth. That's like, right. Investing that's that what, money to invest yeah. in other companies. And investing. Exactly. Exactly. I want to be an investor and advisor. In your community. So I want to show, like, I am working very hard to show what we can do when we exercise group, group economics in the capacity of investments. We talk about real estate a lot as black people. We're, like, really out there getting real estate, flipping homes. Shout out to what you're doing. And but now let's talk about technology. Now mm-hmm. let's talk about making other types of investments. You know, let's, people are becoming let's, millionaires yeah, and billionaires. Yeah, I mean, even on Two Chains' new thing with E40 talks about startup cu- currency, startup company cryptocurrency tokens. He said that in his verse right. on two dollar bill. So it's like y'all need to listen. And these you rappers, go to you listen in the lyrics. Oh, I got a podcast called Bars. I'm. Hey. I live you go to San Francisco and it's all around you. It's all around you. People that really mm-hmm. don't look like us and, and the, the problem ones is that most do, people don't know. Is and that's the whole thing is just giving people the knowledge. Same thing with real estate. People just don't know. Same with the stock market. And unless we. People who are, are doing it are teaching the community, like what right. you're trying to do in real estate and what you're doing with, 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 with tech. People just don't know because it's scary. You know, a lot of people just say, you know what, I saved up this five thousand right. dollars, I saved up this ten grand, this twenty grand. I don't know. I want to know what I'm putting my money in, you know, because there's so many scams out there. So, you know, as long as we keep teaching the, the, our community, it'll it'll work. But well, the number of black people in Silicon Valley is very, 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 very small. Very small. I mean, it's like, small. what, less than 3% or something? Less like that? than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's Even if you look small. at people employed at Google or Facebook, it's a very small number. It's very, very, mm-hmm. very small. And and a lot of times people get, we get intimidated thinking, well, I can't afford that or I'm not rich. And we right. see all these people like yourself, high net worth, getting houses, flipping them or Snoop Dogg and Nas investing in startups and they're like, well, how can I do that? I, I can't afford to go do that. And now you can invest for as little as $250 mm-hmm. in a tech company. So it's like not only education, but realizing like the barrier to entry is gone. You can get in mm-hmm. and invest at almost any level. But you also, but people also got to understand, I, you know, people always think it's, 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 this is a quick rich type of thing. I'm going to invest $250 not, no, and right then here. you're going to make me a billionaire. It, it doesn't work like that. That's a very like that. rare one very, of a billion very rare. shot chance. That doesn't work. Like yeah. You can make money and you will make money yeah. hopefully, but it, it's not going to be billionaires. You know, And it's a, a also a process. That. Like you, some things didn't work Absolutely. and you had to regroup, figure it out and come back and try something else. Many times. I mean, mm-hmm. I have a thousand failure stories. You know, I've, I've, <laughs> a, a lot of things I've done wrong and messed up and but that's what prepared me for where I am today. And, you know, I, I feel like I definitely have a calling on my life to help uplift my community in this way. Nobody's being very vocal because when you speak out against the system, you also box yourself in. Like, it's a backlash for me because if I'm saying, F that, go get your own money, get money from black people. You don't have to raise money. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go out and beg. They looking at me like the VC's like, okay, I hear you. Yeah. Don't come around here for now, no let's check. See if, let's see if your go, black people go support get you. Yeah. Go get it. <laughs> so I was like, all right, oh, damn. All right. Because my investors were like, if you go do this, we're not investing no more money. We're done with you. Like flat out told me that. And I'm like, all right, I, I believe in this. I'm going to see. And I wasn't sure how the community respond. I'm, I'm selling, I'm doing a token sale. Like mm-hmm. I'm a, literally a cryptocurrency as a shares and it's such a new thing it just happened in 2018 where it became legal and so just i'm so overwhelmed and happy with the response because as of now we raised over 250,000 from my people and you know this is a very new thing but i know that this is going to be game changing from what i can find i'm the first black woman to ever do this from what i can find and i want i don't want to be the the first, it doesn't matter if you're the first. It matters if you open doors for the hundredth. So I'm really trying to help other entrepreneurs who talk about they can't get money. Go get your own money. Do you connect with other people in that space, like Angel Rich? And all? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, absolutely. It's a very, you know, shout out to all the black tech founders. It's an amazing community of people that show love and support one another. And so it's crazy because when I go look at my crowdfunding campaign now, so many other founders have invested in me. I didn't even know. That's great. So That's many other black tech and just, it ain't all about black too, but a lot of them 
have invested in support and show love and make introductions. So it's a you nice know, source of pride, though. It is, and because people always say black people don't stick together in the tech community, it's not we true. all we got. Mm -hmm. We do stick together because it's like we don't have time to be beefing. We don't have time to yeah. to not support because we only get one chance. They talk about, oh, you know, the white man, you can start a business and it fail and start another one. We can't fail. That's right. We don't get a chance to go f up some checks and be like, oh, we'll give you some more millions to try again. Now nah, we don't get, get creative. <laughs> we don't get another chance. So you know, all the black tech community has been showing so much love just to each other. I mean, Ali Gates. Yeah, yeah, that's the homie. I saw he was up here, and mm -hmm. I mean, it's a real small network. We we all know each other. Dope. Yeah. Well, where can people find you, Don Dixon, if they want to talk to you, if they yeah. want to follow up, invest, or get if some advice from you that, as well? You can find me on all social media under Don Dixon. S D I C K S O N. Check out um, our crowdfunding campaign. We're definitely raising money. Startengine.com forward slash popcom, our website popcom.shop. But just, you know, invest in something. Of course, I want you to invest in me, but like, I'm gonna make invest in yep. something. Like, get yeah. out there, make your money work, take a chance. You create wealth by making investments, take risks. You know, let's, let's really do something for the mm -hmm. culture as far as show that we can put our money somewhere other than being hyper consumers. I'm going to invest in Popcom today. Yes. Let's do it. Dawn Dixon, thank, thank you. Up. Thanks, y'all. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's Dawn Dixon. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.